The scripture for us this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. And before we read it, I would like to set up some of the context around what we will be hearing next. So just picture it, if you will. Jesus has just been baptized by John in the Jordan River. And we hear that some miraculous things happened at that time. Things like the sky was ripped apart. Something like a dove was seen to descend upon Jesus, filling him with the Holy Spirit. A voice was heard from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, with him I am well pleased. Immediately after the baptism, the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into a desert place where for 40 days and 40 nights, he is tempted by Satan. He is tested about his freedom, whether it is his will or the will of God that is in charge of him. And Jesus answers all three of the temptations Satan puts to him simply by reciting the word of God. Not his own words, but God's word. Because God's will was his will. The devil's temptations had no power whatsoever over him. They meant nothing. And so with his baptism and temptation over and behind him, Jesus decides to go home. And here's where our scripture begins from Luke 4. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and finally to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Tomorrow, our flags will wave, parades will be held. Hopefully, our Lions Park will be full of families gathered there to celebrate. Fireworks will light up the sky as we all celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day, all around our country. We will remember who we are according to the Declaration of Independence, which was penned some 240 years ago, that we are a people endowed by our Creator with the unalienable rights to what? Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. We will celebrate our freedom freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to vote in a democratic nation. Ours is the first democratic country based on national, political, and personal freedoms combined. Yes, we live in the land of liberty. Our founding fathers have surely left us with quite a legacy. 
Independence Day, we say, let freedom ring. It sounds almost too good to be true, and maybe it is. Because in our history as a free people, we have actually lost more human lives here on our own soil than in any other war we have ever fought. The Civil War, a battle for freedom between national government and state government. It would take the most terrible amount of bloodshed on both sides to reunite our country and to reclaim the basic human right of freedom for all persons, regardless of the color of their skin. We have crossed oceans and fought alongside our allies against evil regimes that would strip people of their freedom and dignity in both of our world wars, in Korea, in Vietnam, in Iraq, and we've continued into our 21st century still sending our loved ones to fight for freedom of people living more than halfway around our globe. Maybe you've heard something has happened in England. Yes, the people of England have voted for freedom from the European Union. Now I hear the question raised about how much the British people actually understood what the European Union was, let alone to be able to vote to get out of it. But now it's done, and look at the uproar Brexit is causing around the world. Now no one can predict what the future of England will be, but many have called June 23rd, 2016, British Independence Day. With internet access, we have freedom of information at our fingertips beyond our wildest imaginations. But with this kind of freedom comes great responsibilities to set boundaries that are put in place to protect you and me. Google and Facebook are already blocking content on their sites that promote terrorism, especially radical Islamic terrorism. We protect people's freedom to gather, their freedom of assembly, even if that group is a Californian neo-Nazi hate group. Our boundaries are at risk as more and more marginalized persons and groups demand their own freedom. Some of us would say that our freedom and rights as Christians are being stripped away at the expense of someone else's personal freedom. So where are we headed in the name of freedom? We have over 200 cities in our country. They are called sanctuary cities, where being an illegal alien there entitles them to all the freedom of those who are legal residents. Only they do not pay any of the taxes that we do. So should freedom be controlled regarding immigrants or should we look to the Statue of Liberty and open our arms and welcome them all in? We are a people who stand up for human freedom. But friends, we're a prejudiced people. My meaning of freedom may not be yours. History teaches us that there will always be something that puts ethnicity, special interest group, churches, political parties, and even countries against each other, each one trying to assert their own kind of freedom, each one believing that their position is the right one. 
those of us who have fought in war or those of us who have supported our warriors know the meaning of freedom through sacrifice much better than people like me who sit back and enjoy our good fortune. When we wave the American flag tomorrow, how many of us will really understand what the 4th of July is about and why it is so important? Where and when did the value of our history seem to vanish? I saw a video program recently where many younger persons were asked a lot of questions that, and they were simple ones, regarding United States history and even current leadership in this country. And I was shocked that the vast majority of these younger adults who were asked these questions were not able to answer one correctly. Are we raising a generation of men and women who take their freedom for granted and only seem to want more and more of it? They want what they want, when they want it, how they want it, and a lot of them seem to want everything to be given to them. This is their meaning of freedom. Folks, they've been left with a legacy of freedom that comes through great sacrifice. But do they understand the responsibility that goes along with their freedom today? And so it goes for us, this struggle with the meaning of the word freedom. And then we look at almost 2,000 years ago, before the declaration of independence was ever thought about or drawn up, there was another man who lived, who issued a declaration of freedom for all. Back in his hometown of Nazareth, Jesus was in the synagogue when he was asked to read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He chose a prophecy that had been recorded 800 years earlier. 800 years, that's a long time. It was a prophecy of what God was going to do. And the Jewish people believed these prophecies and they were faithful and they waited and waited until they were fulfilled. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom from the, for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. His fellow Jews had heard these hopeful, saving words many, many, many times before. But then Jesus would speak a revelation to them. He would say, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The people were stunned. They couldn't wrap their minds around what Jesus had just said. And when he went on to say that this freedom was offered for all people, they rose up. No, no, they said, this is our prophecy. We are God's chosen people. This freedom is for us alone. Who does this man think he is? The Messiah? But isn't he only Joseph the carpenter's son? He just doesn't fit our idea of what the Messiah has to look like. Jesus would say later in his ministry that if only the people had ears to hear, if they had eyes to see who was standing right there in their midst. 
So what is it going to take before they begin to believe? Jerusalem, the cross on Golgotha, would be waiting for Jesus. And we who follow Jesus know that it took an act of the greatest sacrifice to reveal to us our greatest freedom given to us by God in Jesus Christ in his victorious freedom over death itself. We've reviewed some of our human meanings of freedom now and we see that our national, political, and personal freedoms will always be challenged and often changed to accommodate other groups' demands for their particular brand of freedom. And so the question for us this morning is, what is God's meaning of freedom? I remind you of the prophecy from Isaiah. Jesus said, proclaim the good news to the poor Freedom is proclaimed for every prisoner. Sight is given to the blind. Freedom from oppression has begun. The year of the Lord's favor is now among you. The year of the Lord's favor. Now you may be thinking, hmm, I don't quite remember what the year of the Lord's favor means. That year was referred to in our scriptures as the year of jubilee and it lasted one year it came around every 50 years when the jews believed that god was calling every jew to forgive any debts any and all debts that they owed or debts that were owed to them they believed it was a time when families and tribes would come home, reunite on their own land. Everyone would share what they had in common and freedom would be proclaimed throughout their lands. The year of the Lord's favor was a call from God to come home. Be reconciled with your family, your land, and even with your enemy. It came to uh, represent the time when the Messiah was seen to maybe arrive. Jesus said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The Lord's favor is upon you now. Now the Lord is in your midst. Here is the promise to us of the freedom that God gives us, my friends. A freedom that is not fashioned by humans, but the freedom we all receive due to one thing, and that is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good news to the poor. Not just those who are poor monetarily, but those who are poor in spirit, the downtrodden, the hopeless, Jesus says, you are free. Freedom for prisoners. So ask yourself, what prison am I in? Well, maybe it's a prison of fear, or maybe a prison of doubt, or illness, or unforgiveness, or addiction, or prejudice. Jesus said, your bars are gone. With me, you are free. The blind see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. What have we been blind to? Jesus says to us, see with my eyes, and you are free. The oppressed 
have been sent free. So we ask ourselves, what am I a slave to? What or whom has power over my free will? Jesus says, rise up, rise up. I have set you free. We are to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor in this modern era, not for one year, my friends, but forever. God is forgiving you, freeing you, and calling you to come home in this world and in the world to come. Jesus says, let God's freedom reign in your heart and you will be truly free. Christ Church stands on this kind of freedom. We believe that Christ died once for all. As Jesus' followers, we proclaim true and eternal freedom. We are to be united people as the very body of Christ. From many, we are one in Christ. God's freedom reigns in us and over us. Yes, we will enjoy tomorrow and be thankful for the brave men who believed that the will of God led them to declare independence over England. They believed their God-given right was to freedom from tyranny. And we will be thankful that not just tomorrow, but every day in Christ, we are offered the gift of God's own freedom, a freedom that will outlast this world. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of love and deliverance, faithfulness and mercy, forgiveness and hope, you draw us toward freedom, not merely in our human understanding, but toward the higher ground, the more excellent freedom, freedom in Christ. Help us to remember that freedom is never really free. In the name of the one who loved us, who laid down his life for us, Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow we will celebrate uh, underneath a lot of American flags.